I click, I like, I shop online. And that produces huge amounts of data. But who analyzes it? One culprit is the advertising industry. I look for a curry recipe online and suddenly ads for Indian cookbooks pop up everywhere. Big data. Is it a blessing or a curse? Our focus today on Shift. I'm always online. My smartphone is always connected, wherever I go. Along the way, I leave digital footprints and help create a part of what's known as big data. Researchers have analyzed close to a million apps from the Google Play Store. They found that 90% pass on user data. And many of these apps send data to several companies. That sounds unsettling. But does big data have a real effect on my life? Well, it does let me know if I need my umbrella tomorrow. This Vega rocket has a new kind of weather satellite on board. At an altitude of 320 kilometers, Aeolus will collect data that will help meteorologists create better weather forecasts. For the first time, a satellite will be able to measure wind speeds using laser rays. It even works in locations that are normally inaccessible, like over oceans. Is a perfect storm brewing out there? Big data can help us predict the weather. Insurance companies also use big data, for instance, to estimate the impact of natural disasters like flooding. And car insurers set their rates according to the risk of theft where the policyholder lives. So you might pay more or less for your policy depending on how many cars have been stolen in your neighborhood. Big data can also make your sat-nav more useful and precise. In a Las Vegas pilot project, an onboard computer tells drivers how fast to drive to catch the green light. And in Estonia, the port of Tallinn is a digital showcase project. Trucks and goods are checked in electronically. Big data yields better logistics and shorter waiting times. So big data is big business. Companies are investing ever larger sums in software that analyzes it. In 2018, more than 6 billion euros were spent on big data applications in Germany alone. Here's a stunning application from the field of medicine. Predicting flu epidemics with the help of Twitter data. Researchers at Osnabrück University took 500 million tweets from around the world and fed them into a Watson computer system. Watson found the relevant tweets What's more, it recognized what they were about. For instance, if the rider got a flu shot or already had flu symptoms. This process is known as cognitive computing, the digital simulation of human thought processes. Watson, for example, searched for keywords like flu and put information into the right context. Even Berlin's Charité Hospital is using big data to diagnose illnesses more quickly and treat them more effectively. This is a tumour cell, which has specific molecular markers. No two tumour cells are the same, and ideally therapies will be targeted to them. Precision medicine helps determine which therapy is likely to be most effective. Researchers identify the tumour's genetic characteristics to select a targeted treatment. Dr. Claudia Falbrecht from Berlin's Charité Hospital is using big data to improve cancer treatment. She's collaborating with the Molecular Health Data Analysis Company. Data is generated worldwide through various clinical studies and research experiments and then collected in databases, for example. Molecular Health checks these databases regularly on a daily basis and compares the results with those from the patient samples. To get such results, tumor cells' molecular markers are analyzed in a process called sequencing. Doctors at the Charité send the results to Molecular Health. The tumor cells' molecular markers are compared with those of thousands upon thousands of others stored in the company's database. The database also contains information about therapies. A report is produced that provides doctors with a recommended treatment tailored to the specific characteristics of the tumor cell. This is what we're looking for. It's the direction we hope things will go in the future. We'd like patients to receive personalized treatment based on molecular changes we can identify during sequencing. 
The idea behind the project is revolutionary. But using data from so many people as the basis for medical decisions and possibly superseding the diagnosis of the patient's doctor is also controversial. In Germany, people are still quite cautious. We're afraid to give others access to our data, which is understandable. As a researcher, I'd like to manage my own data and know exactly what's happening to it. But I think we must do away with this idea of keeping it all to ourselves. The amount of data is just too large for that. Big Data has already allowed Berlin's Charité Hospital to identify individual therapies for some 30 cancer patients. Treating illnesses with the help of big data, that's real progress. And it shows that AI and humans can work together for the benefit of mankind. Another thing that big data has done is make human behavior more predictable. That's especially interesting for companies who want to target us online with personalized advertising. That can still be hit or miss. Just because I've researched diving expeditions doesn't mean I want to buy a wetsuit right away. But data analysts like Chitpol Mungprom from Thailand are working on ways to optimize ad targeting. When you click, when you like, when you stop to see, you already give all the data to Facebook, to Google, to whatever. We are the technology to help the brands to know how to talk the right way to the right consumer with the information from the social media. Chitpol Mongprom and his fellow Zanru co-founders have been actively collecting data since 2013. Today, the firm employs more than 160 people and mainly analyzes data from the Asian market. They help authorities and companies to control their image. There's been little criticism about how they process the data. Our job is not to own the data, but our, our job is analyze the data for the brand to understand the consumer. So in the end, we, we help each other to understand each, each other easier. But data security specialist Karsten Noll is more critical. He believes that the global trade in data is a multi-billion dollar business from which only a few players profit. Google alone earns over $100 billion a year with online ads. And of course, that $100 billion has to be recovered somehow through the products that are being advertised. So a single company earns hundreds or thousands of dollars a year from each internet user. Then there are the data brokers who profit from collecting and analyzing this flood of data. Using special software, we try to find out who's tracking user behavior. The triangles here represent the trackers, the circles the websites visited. Even users who don't log in aren't surfing anonymously. With every click, the tracker's network grows. In this test, there were close to 20 trackers for every website visited. Big data analysis helps link that information and produce a digital profile of the user. A profile like this describes a person, their fears, their needs, and possibly their financial situation, allowing for advertising to be tailored to meet their budget. It describes us better than even our best friends could. So companies might know me better than my friends do. Even very sensitive data, like that used by health apps, is often passed on to data collectors without users' knowledge. The legal basis for this is sometimes highly questionable. A massive amount of data is generated every day. It comes from a variety of sources, not just the Internet. Whether on Facebook, Instagram or Netflix, every day we humans generate 2.5 million terabytes of data, but not all of it on the net. Visit the doctor and your symptoms and diagnoses are stored in servers. This data is often anonymized and passed on to market researchers. When you phone someone, the call length, location and contact details are scooped up and become part of big data. Brockhaus Encyclopedia defines big data as amounts that are so large, change so fast and are so varied that they can't be processed with standard software. Exactly how much data counts as big is hard to say, as it's not stored or analyzed centrally. IT analysts estimate that in the next six years, the global data sphere will rise to 175 zettabytes per year. One zettabyte is equal to one billion terabytes, one trillion gigabytes, 
one quadrillion megabytes. In comparison, a three-minute MP3 track is around three megabytes in size. So one zettabyte can store around 333 trillion songs. Processing such masses of data isn't easy. There are three aspects to consider. There's the hardware aspect, what hardware can handle it. Second, there's the software that processes the data directly. And third, there's the algorithms, which glean information and knowledge from this data. Hardware, software, algorithms. It's a big business. Big data is analyzed using software platforms called frameworks. They divide data between several high-performance servers, where it can be processed simultaneously. Processing that data quickly is key. That's where Data Artisans, a Berlin-based startup, comes in. They analyze very large amounts of data very fast. Using an open source platform called Apache Flink, they helped create. It processes incoming data in real time and can simultaneously analyze data that's already been stored. Stream processing is the big new thing. So it's no surprise that Chinese conglomerate Alibaba snapped up data artisans for an estimated 90 million euros earlier this year. That's great for the startup's founders, but is it good for society? And this poses a risk that data could be compiled and analyzed in such a way that, for instance, human behavior becomes more predictable and transparent. And that could end up limiting individual freedom. Honestly, I'm pretty generous when it comes to my personal data. If I look into a service and like it, I'm willing to pay for it with my data. But maybe the price really is too high. Is trading your personal data for free apps or services a fair exchange? Or will big data turn into a surveillance nightmare? What do you think? Join the discussion on Facebook or on DW.com. Goodbye, until next time. Mm -hmm.